Today, the purpose of this vlog is to just test out the gyro slash catalyst browse data in the Sony a7S III. I did my full stabilization review of the Sony a7S III in a previous video, so if you're interested in that, check it out right here. But a lot of you guys have been saying that all my footage is super shaky, and I find that really funny because, you know, some people want that real world stabilization test and how they're going to be using it while vlogging. And that's how it looks like while vlogging. So I've learned some new things about the gyro data and Catalyst Browse. I want to try it out. I want to give it a second chance and see if it's actually worth it and if it's a viable option for vloggers. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be cranking up the shutter beyond compare. We're at one over two thousandth right now, which is unheard of in the video world because I always shoot at one fiftieth. But that's what we're doing. We got to crank it beyond compare for Catalyst Browse. How does it look? So what we're doing today is actually going to the mail to pick up the filter that was supposed to arrive before my previous video. This is the Hollywood Blackmagic quarter strength filter. I'm actually really excited about this filter. And since we're using gyro data and not NDing and using a normal shutter, I could actually throw it on during this vlog. All right, we got the box. We're gonna open this up, put it on and test it out. So we now have the Hollywood Blackmagic quarter strength filter on the 20 mil 1.8 G. How does it look? Can you tell a difference in my skin? Is everything just a little bit softer, a little bit smoother, highlight roll off a little bit nicer? I'm intrigued to see how this looks. So I'll be doing a full video on that, obviously. Oh, look at that. We're getting a little bit overexposed. I'm gonna jack the shutter up even more. We're at 2,500 now. This is not normal video setting shooting. But uh, with Catalyst Browse, it doesn't matter because they, they encourage you to jack up the shutter. So how stable do we look? Does it look warpy? Does it look crazy? So a thought that occurred to me last night, aside from all the other awesome stuff that comes with gyro data, is hyperlapses. Because usually the way I've been doing hyperlapses, um, you take a bunch of photos and then create a video from those raw images. And that's a lot of work. It's, it's easier than a lot of people think, but it's still a lot of work. And the final product, there's a bit of a workflow to get that product going. But if you can take 4K S-Log3 10-bit hyperlapses and get them stable just like that with the gyro data, that would be a pretty fast and insane workflow. So I'm gonna be doing a whole nother video on that as well, just to see if this crazy idea slash theory is viable in the real world. So I, I kind of want to see how that works. So we're once again in the secluded area and the mask is off. For those of you saying, take the mask off in the comment section, that's how you automatically get banned. That's instant ban. We're in a pandemic, wear a mask. Also, I'm really intrigued to see how this Hollywood Blackmagic filter is working. I know it's an overcast day, so the highlights aren't like super harsh, but uh, I'm kind of intrigued because I'm excited to see how this diffusion mask makes my skin look. And uh, now that we're on this secluded path, this is where a lot of people say that my shakiness is worse than ever uh, because it's a very uneven path. And so I think the gyro data will really show whether or not this is a viable option for just run and gun vlogging with no stabilization other than gyro. I personally have a very harsh step, um, so I'm not a, a smooth ninja walker. I'm a very like impact heavy kind of walker. Same with my running, it's always been that way. So I think this is a really good test to see just how stable Catalyst Brows can make this footage because I know for a fact that this is ridiculously shaky footage. We got no stabilization on in order to have that catalyst brows going. Whoa. That no motion blur really throws me off. That's the thing that really, like once you start shooting proper video, just looks so weird. If you want that stable footage with catalyst brows, just gotta jack that shutter up beyond compare. We're at 2,500th of a shutter right now. That's unheard of. It just hurts my soul a little bit because I know deep down that this is so wrong. <laughs> but we're doing it for the sake of stabilization. Stabilization over everything else. Look at that, no motion blur whatsoever. That's so weird seeing no motion blur. It just, it just really takes me out of it. If I was watching a video 
that's the thing. I feel like a lot of people aren't going to enjoy seeing that out in the real world. Had to switch hands, it's getting a little heavy. We're accustomed to seeing this in real life, in, in Hollywood, you know? Like, we, we, we see motion blur, and now suddenly we're being encouraged to take that motion blur off for the sake of stabilization, and sure, our, our footage might be very smooth, but at what cost? You know, I feel like if the viewer is watching something and they're like, oh, this is super smooth, but it doesn't look cinematic at all. There's something, like, they might not be able to tell what the issue is right off the bat, but they, they'll know that something is just a little off. And that's something I noticed while editing the previous Catalyst Browse footage while I was doing my stabilization review video. It just, it, it looked off. But in certain circumstances, I was totally down for it. For like my running shot, most people aren't gonna care that the motion blur isn't there because you're stable and people can see you. And in those high action situations, you do actually want a higher shutter because you don't want that motion blur because then you're missing out on the action. But in cases like this where you're just vlogging, the shutter might be a deal breaker. And granted, you might not need to jack it up to one over 2,500, but the fact I was shooting at one over 200 and then one over two, uh, and then one over 400 for the previous test that I did, and there was still that uh, jitter going on from the stabilization. So although you could get away with it with that lower shutter, I already considered 200 and 400 jacking the shutter up. But after seeing other people test this out, and they were like, you know, just go as high as you possibly can, and seeing that jitter still there in the final footage, I'm curious to see how much you need to jack the shutter up to actually get super nice, crispy, viable stabilization that isn't going to have that weird jitter effect um, like an iPhone stabilization. One of the big reasons why I'm also testing out this video, testing out this stabilization and making this video is because I rewatched some camera conspiracy videos and he put one out recently where he's just talking about the gyro data. I think he was using the A7C and uh, how it didn't work with the lens he was using it on and then he switched the Tamron and it did work. And it looked pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, you know what? I'll give this a second shot. I kind of trashed on it in the full stabilization review. And although I, I still stand by that, that it's not an every use situation, there are downsides. Um, someone in the comment section said that you can actually export it in a higher quality than what I was getting, and if that's the case, which I will let you know when I get this back in post, um, if that's the case, why it's not the default when importing S3 footage, why the default is downgrading your footage, so I don't know why Sony is doing that, so I still think they need to update that. I shouldn't have to be the one to go in and manually make this footage the same format it already is, it should just be the same format, so that's an issue I was having. Also, Camera Conspiracy was saying that while he was exporting the footage from Catalyst Browse, that like a 15 second clip took him quite a few minutes, and then a full clip was going to take him like hours. And I was like, what? I was not experiencing that in my tests when I was doing the full stabilization review it was taking me, at most, like a minute to export these files. Granted, I have a newer computer, and if you wanna know exactly what the specs of my computer are, I'll put that right up here. <laughs> the, flip the, the flip screen reverses the image, so I think I'm pointing to the correct corner, but then when it flips it back, I think it's up here, so <laughs> we'll see how that works. But I also don't think a lot of people's workflows is going to be 100% Catalyst Browse where they need to be doing that. I feel like it's going to be a couple clips here and there. So I just, I don't see Catalyst Browse becoming the default. I still think it's a specialty thing that people will use in certain circumstances when the occasion calls for it for a certain look for better stabilization. I don't think it's going to become the default. Most people aren't going to be putting every single clip for every single video through Catalyst Browse using gyro data. 
most people still want that cinematic 180th shutter angle and they want to not have this additional thing in their workflow. So, but that's what we're doing today. We're just doing a full video, Catalyst Brow, seeing if it's a viable option, see if the general population cares that there's no motion blur whatsoever. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie. This is very cool seeing how stable this is compared to what it was Previously, I'm I'm a little bit mind blown. I was hesitant to use this and jack the shutter up that much, but the final result, that's hard to argue with, man. This is near gimbal-like performance, and I was only cropping about 15 to 20% depending on the clip, so that's really impressive. Like I said before, there are still downsides. This is adding to your workflow. Like Camera Conspiracy said, there is no batch export mode. So you have to sit there one by one and export each individual file. And for some people, that's just not gonna cut it. And for me, like I said in the video, when I was doing the initial stabilization test, it was only taking me a minute or so to export these 15 second clips. But uh, after doing these minute long and the longest clip was actually 15 minutes, that 15 minute clip took almost 40 minutes. And I was like, oh my God, this is, it's just not viable for a full workflow. But again, like I said, I don't think a lot of people are going to be using this in this kind of way where every single clip that they shoot is gyro data stabilization. I think a lot of the time it'll just be a very specialized thing, one or two clips here and there for a shoot, and that'll be the play. If you're a vlogger and you're just wanting the smoothest possible footage and this is the way you think you wanna go, then sure, just be aware that it's going to take a lot of extra time to export that footage. Speaking of exporting footage, I did notice that you can actually change the export settings, which I greatly appreciate. Shout out that one guy in the comments who said you can actually get that higher quality stuff. For me, I don't think this is an a7S III based preset. I think this is actually a FX9 preset and not a Sony a7S III preset because when you export it, it comes out as a weird file name and when you import it into Premiere, it has eight channels of audio and it is exporting at 300 megabytes per second when on the S3's 24 frames per second, it's actually 280 megabits per second. You have to go up to the 30 FPS to actually get that 300. So I'm fairly certain that this is an FX9 preset and it works fine. There's no downside to, to exporting with this that I saw un and unless you're really annoyed with, <laughs> with the eight channels of audio, but you can easily delete that. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I think that Sony still needs to update this, have some A7S III set presets and have those be default because right now it's recognizing the S3 footage as like old footage with the old codecs. You can change the higher codex but i like i said i think that's an fx9 preset so it's not quite an a7s3 preset but i'm sure we'll see that down the line the actual stabilization process like i said previously is very very simple you click stabilize you slide the slider of how much crop you actually want i slide it to my personal taste and i see very little jitter going on and then i'm like all right and for me that's usually between 75 and 88 percent usually around 80 and 85 is where I keep it, but on the extremes, I like having that little bit of wiggle room. But yeah, I think this is a really viable option for very specific shots. I don't think you should be shooting your entire video with this kind of stabilization. And I think it's very interesting and very cool, especially seeing just how shaky that footage was to begin with, because I know a lot of you know that my footage is very shaky when I'm vlogging out there to something that looks like it's on a gimbal. And that's really, really impressive. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I know I've been rambling on for a little bit. I hope you enjoyed this kind of crazy mishmash video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comment section down below if you did. My name is Mark Steiner and I'll see you next time.